Okay, let us stand and face Jerusalem to open up. To whom shall I speak and give warning? Shall I speak and give warning? That they may hear. That they may hear. Behold. Behold, their ear is uncircumcised. Their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. And they cannot hearken. Behold, behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. The word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. They have no delight in it. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Stand ye in the ways. Stand ye in the ways. And see. And see. And ask for the old paths. And ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? Where is the good way? And walk therein. And walk therein. And ye shall find rest for your souls. And ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said. But they said. We will not walk therein. We will not walk therein. Also I set my watchman over you. Also I set watchman over you, saying, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, But they said, We will not hearken. We will not hearken. Therefore hear, Therefore hear, Ye nations, Ye nations, And know, And know, O congregation, O congregation, What is among them, What is among them. Hear, O earth, Hear, O earth, Behold, Behold, I will bring evil upon this people. I will bring evil upon this people. Even the fruit of their thoughts. Even the fruit of their thoughts. Because they have not hearkened unto my words. Because they have not hearkened unto my words. Nor to my law. Nor to my law. But rejected it. But rejected it. And today's reading is from Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 10 and 16 to 19. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and understanding, doing of his word, in Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning or good afternoon and welcome to the Israel of God Bible study class. The original Israelites and the original Christians where we let the Bible speak, teaching by subject and title, from Genesis to Revelation. It is good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. My name is Brother Mark Azari, and reading for me today is my brother Rowan. And we would like to take all this opportunity to greet those of you joining us live online and for those who will watch the lessons at a later time. Know that they are friends and family and family of friends. But before we get into today's lesson, let us read the law, or should I say, read our life. For the record, we use the King James Bible, and we are going to read from Exodus 20, and we're going to read 1 to 17. Exodus 20, verses 1 to 17. Okay, verse 1, please read. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation, of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. 
Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Okay, let us go straight into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, and we are going to read 13 and 14. Okay, please read it. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And let us go to Revelation 22, and we are going to read 14 and 15. Okay, please read it. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. And this, brothers and sisters, is the roadmap of salvation. We keep God's commandments and we put our faith in Jesus Christ, the one who atoned for our sins. The title of the lesson today is, Are We Naked? I want to say before we get into the actual lesson that um, if you are new and we understand that the people may be new to navigating the Bible. Uh, so if you can't keep up, you take down the verses and then you can go through this in slow time. OK. The title of the lesson, Are We Naked? Why do we do a lesson like this? Everything in this world, and I mean everything is upside down and inside out. The only thing that is straight, brothers and sisters, is the word of God. But misinformed people have even taken and twisted that too. So we have to be very careful who we listen to. I even uh, attended a church in the past where they wanted to reach the young people within the city. And so printed up these t-shirts with the slogans Jesus in me is wicked. Now because the word wicked had been turned to mean something good, brothers and sisters. They thought it would be a, a, appealing to, your, to the people. Now what we find is that instead of the church changing people's mindset in the world, the world has infiltrated the church and turning the people in the church to be like them in the world, brothers and sisters. And this leaves people totally be bemused people on the outside when they look at the behavior of church people who are supposed to be serving the true and living God. So now brothers and sisters, we open this book and the word of God tells us in Isaiah 520, it says, woe unto them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So this question, brothers and sisters, are we naked? It might seem bizarre, but it is a serious question. So let us go to book. Let us turn our Bibles to uh, 1 Timothy 6. And we're going to read verse 3 to 8. 1 Timothy 6, verses 3 to 8. Okay, please read. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. He is proud, knowing nothing, but dotting about questions and strife of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. All the epistles, that is the letters, brothers and sisters, in the New Testament or New Covenant is written to believers. And in this case, Paul is writing Timothy, this young pastor, whom he had trained up, letting him and us know that there will be those within the church who will not consent to hold some doctrine. They want to be teachers, becoming disputers over words. Paul says they are proud. He said they are corruptors. And he is telling Timothy and us in our time to withdraw from such people. Continue to read. Verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. 
Godliness with contentment is great gain. We brought nothing into this world and we can carry nothing out. So what are we told, brothers and sisters? Having food and raiment that is clothes, let us be content. Brothers and sisters, we spend so much time bothering about what we haven't uh, uh, got, not recognizing the simple and blessedness in just having physical food and clothing on our backs and a roof of our heads, brothers and sisters. So let's go straight into Luke 12. Luke 12. And we are going to read 13 to 15. Skip to 22 to 23, then skip to 27 to 32. Luke 12. Okay, now, pick it up at verse 13. Please read. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. Ah. Uh -huh. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? Go ahead. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Family, we are being warned. Beware of covetousness, brothers and sisters. Stop being red eye of what we see people with. Skip the verse 22 and read. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. Mm -hmm. The life is more than the meat, and the body is more than raiment. Are we hearing? Life is more than food and clothes, brothers and sisters. Skip the verse 27 and read. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Consider that, brothers and sisters, King Solomon was considered one of the greatest kings Israel has ever had. And yet, in all his winery and finery, he was not even dressed like a lily in the field. Go ahead and read. If then God so clothe the grass, which is today in the field, mm -hmm. and tomorrow is cast into the oven, yes. how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? Uh-huh. Go ahead. And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. Uh -huh. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Yes, yeah, so what's he say? Go ahead. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God. But rather what? Seek ye the kingdom of God. Go ahead and read. And all these things shall be added unto you. Uh -huh. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Do we believe God, brothers and sisters? Do we really believe him? Does our actions prove that? He said, put me first, brothers and sisters, in everything. Seek the kingdom of God. Did we really hear what Jesus just said? He said, for it is a father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Why then, brothers and sisters, do we spend so much time chasing the wind? Chasing after this, chasing after that in this world. We've been told you can't take none of it with you, brothers and sisters. So let's go to Isaiah, the 64th chapter. Isaiah 64. And we're going to read 1 to 4. Isaiah 64, 1 to 4. Okay, verse 1. Please read. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens, that thou wouldest come down that the mountains might flow down at thy presence. Uh -huh. As when the melting fire burneth, the fire causeth the waters to boil, to make thy name known to thine adversaries, that the nations may tr tremble at thy presence. Uh -huh. When thou didst terrible things, yes. which he looked not for, uh -huh. thou camest down, the mountains flowed down at thy presence. Yes, go ahead. He wants us to know some it. For since the beginning of the world, since the beginning of the world, go ahead. Men have not heard, uh -huh. nor perceived by the ear. Yes. Neither have thy, thy eyes seen, O God, besides thee, that he hath prepared for him that waited for him. Brothers and sisters, we've got to take our head from our, the things of this world, of this glitz and glamour that is flashed up before our eyes. Big house, big cars, all this sort of stuff, brothers and sisters. Chasing down vanity. The word is telling us, hey, 
you people, we haven't got a clue what the Lord has prepared for those who are waiting for him. Let's see if the Apostle Paul reminds us of this said thing. Let us go into 1 Corinthians 2, and we're going to read 9 to 14. 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 14. Okay, my brother, verse 9, please read. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. And we have to ask ourselves, has it really entered into our hearts, brothers and sisters, into our minds? When I look at myself and I look at the behavior of others too, brothers and sisters, I really don't think that we get it. So go ahead and read. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. That is by his word. Go ahead. For the spirit searcheth all things. Uh -huh. Yeah, the deep things of God. Yes. For what man knoweth the things of a man, uh -huh. save the spirit of a man which is in him. That's our mind, brothers and sisters. Nobody knows what's going on in there but us. Go ahead and read. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. That is right. Go ahead. Now we have received. Not the spirit of the world, uh -huh. but the spirit which is of God. That is right. Go ahead. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now we understand why there's so much attack upon the word of God, brothers and sisters, this Bible. And why there are so many things which are vying for our attention. Always drawing us over here. Drawing us. Come look at this. Come look at that. Why? Because, brothers and sisters, here the word of God is revealed unto us. Did you finish that? Yes, sir. Verse 13. Go ahead. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. Man's wisdom is foolishness. Go ahead. But which the Holy Ghost teaches, uh -huh. comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That's what the Word of God does. It compares spiritual things with spiritual things. Go ahead and read. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Uh-huh. Why is that? For they are foolishness unto him. They are what? Foolishness unto him. Go ahead, sir. Neither can he know them. Why can't he know them? Because they are spiritually discerned. Yes, brothers and sisters. For us to know them, what have we got to do, brothers and sisters? We got to get into the Word of God and obey what he says let us look at the state of the natural man which we were all were and sometimes may still be even right here today let's go into galatians the fifth chapter galatians 5 i'm going to read 19 to 21 galatians 5 19 to 21 okay verse 19 please read it now the works of the flesh are manifest this is the natural man the thinking of the natural man go ahead and read which are these? What are they? Adultery. Adultery, brothers and sisters, top of the list. You have people who are married, yet they're not happy with their spouse. They got to go play in the field. Go out there thinking the grass is greener on the other side. Go ahead and read. Fornication. That's people who are, are not married, but still go around sleeping around all over the place. Go ahead. Uncleanness. Yes. Lasciviousness. That strong sexual lust. Give in to it. Go ahead and read. Idolatry. Idolatry. That's worshipping of false gods. Go ahead. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Read. Hatred. Yes. Variant. Uh -huh. Emulation. Yes. Competing against one another. Go ahead and read. Wrath. Wrath. Strife. Yes. Sedition. Uh -huh. Heresy. Heresies. Go ahead. Envying. Yes. Murders. Uh -huh. Drunkenness. Yes. Reve revelings. Revelings. Yes. All night parties. Drunkenness with it. Go ahead. And such like of the which I tell you before. Why he tell you before? He gonna tell us again. Read. As I have also told you in time past. Yes. That they which do such things uh -huh. shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Will not what? Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Brothers and sisters, we read earlier where Jesus told us it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. But what are we being told here? If we are lawbreakers, brothers and sisters, we will not enter into his kingdom. That's what he's telling us, brothers and sisters. Let us see what these practices are likened to. Let us go to Colossians, the third chapter. Are we going to read 1 to 10? Colossians 3, 1 to 10. Okay, my brother, verse 1. Please read. 
if ye then be risen with Christ, uh -huh. seek those things which are above, yes. where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. This is quite simple, brothers and sisters. When we hear this word of truth, and we know that we have to repent and be baptized. When we go down in the water in our baptism, it's symbolizing of us dying with Christ, brothers and sisters. And when he came out of the water, it, it was the newness of life. So it is for us, brothers and sisters. When we come out of that water, we know we got to keep the commandments of God. And we have been told, brothers and sisters, to seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Read. Set your affection on things above, yes. not on things on the earth. No, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. For ye are dead, yes. and your life is hid with Christ in we God. We are dead to all these lifestyles which we used to live upon this earth. Because they lead to death. Go ahead and read. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, uh -huh. then shall ye also appear with him in glory. That's what we are looking for. So what are we told? Go ahead. Mortify therefore your members uh -huh. which are upon the earth. Yes. Fornication. Uh -huh. Uncleanness. Yes. Inordinate affection. Yes. Evil concupiscence. Concupiscence. Go ahead. And covetousness. Yes. Which is idolatry. Which is idolatry. Mortify. Literally, brothers and sisters, what do we do when we have dead bodies? We call the morticians and they come in and take it, brothers and sisters, to prepare for burial. So, so it is when all these lust and, and sinful things rise up in us we have to use the word of god and mortify it kill the lust whatever way it may come at us whatever the temptation that's what we got to do go ahead and read for which things sake the wrath of god cometh on the children of disobedience because if we don't brothers and sisters then the judgment of god will fall upon us read in the which ye also walked some time uh -huh. when ye lived in them. That's how we used to behave. Go ahead. But now ye also put off all these. Yes. Anger, uh -huh. wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your All mind. them dirty jokes we used to tell. Get rid of all of that stuff. Go ahead. Lie not one to Stop another. Stop lying. See, Go ahead. Seeing that you have put off the old man uh -huh. with his deeds. Yes. And have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So we see what we have to do, brothers and sisters. We have to put off all these evil lifestyle and behavior. They are like filthy, dirty clothes, which we were all clothed with. We've got to get rid of them and put on our righteous garments, brothers and sisters. So now, let's go to 1 John 3 and verse 4. Because... There are people may be watching today who have never ever known the biblical definition of what sin is. You may have been attending church all your life and have never read it or heard. So now we're going to find out. 1 John 3 and verse 4. Read it, my brother. Whosoever committeth sin, yes, transgresseth also the law. Go ahead. For sin is the transgression of the law. And that is what sin is, brothers and sisters. It is breaking the commandments and the laws and statutes of God, which he commanded. That is sin. That's what sin is, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. Deuteronomy 4. And we are going to read... 1 to 2 and then skip to uh, verse 6. Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. Okay, my brother, verse 1, please read it. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, uh -huh. unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you for to do them, that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Uh -huh. Ye shall not add unto the word. Don't add to the word. Which I command you. Yes. Neither shall ye diminish aught from Neither it. Neither take nothing from it. I've given it to you uncut. That's how you deal with it. Read. That ye may keep the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I command you. Yes. Skip down to verse 6 and read. Keep therefore and do them. Ah, uh -huh. why is that? For this is your wisdom. Yes. And your understanding. Ah. Uh -huh. In the sight of the nations. Yes. Which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So how were the nations were going to hear? We, the priests of God, brothers and sisters, are to teach them. So how are the priests supposed to be? Let's go to Exodus, the 28th chapter. 
Exodus 28. And we are going to read verse 1 to 2 and then skip to 40. Okay, verse 1. Please read. And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that ye may minister unto me in the priest's office, mm -hmm. even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, yes. Aaron's sons. Yes. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron, yes. thy brother, for uh -huh. glory and for beauty. For what? For glory and for, for beauty. For glory and for beauty. Skip down to um, verse 40 and read. And for Aaron's sons thou shalt make coats, and thou shalt make for them girdles and bonnets, shall thou make for them for glory and for beauty. So brothers and sisters, under the Levitical priesthood, which was based upon the, uh, the law of animal sacrifices for sin, we see the Lord commanding the priestly robes were to be made for what? For glory and for beauty, brothers and sisters. Why? Because we're representing him. We're representing him. But that was on the external, brothers and sisters. But look what else the priest must be clothed with. This is why when we come to the house of God, brothers and sisters, we have to smarten up ourselves. No matter what it is you've got, even if it's poor, you can still look the business. I know even here, we, 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 you can go downtown and get a little uh, 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 a suit for less than 30 pounds, brothers and sisters. Whatever it may be in dollars, whatever currency you're at. You don't have to walk around looking like a tramp. So now, let us look what else the priest must be clothed with. Let's go to Psalm 132. Psalm 132. And we are going to read one verse, and that's verse 9. 132 and 9. Okay, my brother, please read it. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness. Let them be, thy priests be clothed in what? With righteousness. With what? With righteousness. Go ahead and read. And let thy saints shout for joy. And that is what's supposed to happen, people. Under the first covenant and second covenant, the priests must be clothed with righteousness. That is doing what is right in the eyes of the Lord by obeying him. Let's go to Deuteronomy the 8th chapter. Deuteronomy 8. And we are going to read 1 to 3. Deuteronomy 8, 1 to 3. Okay, please read. Verse all, 1. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do, uh -huh. that ye may live and yes. multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your father. Our lives depend on it, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, read. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee uh -huh. these 40 years in yes. the wilderness. Yes. To humble thee. To do what? To humble thee. To do what? To humble thee. And we better learn to humble ourselves, brothers and sisters, because so many of us like to puff ourselves up. And we got to watch it. Me and you. All the time. Go ahead and read. And to prove thee. And to do what? And to prove thee. That means our God will test us, brothers and sisters, to see what we will do in every given time on every situation. Go ahead and read. To know what was in thine heart, uh -huh. whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Go ahead. And he humbled thee, uh -huh. and suffered thee to hunger, yes. and fed thee with manna, uh -huh. which thou knewest not. Yes. Neither did thy fathers know, uh -huh. that he might make thee know. What does he want us to know, brother Ron? Read. That man doeth not live by bread only, uh -huh. but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doeth man live. It's not just about physical bread, brothers and sisters. It is about every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. This God we serve don't speak idle words. It's not like us man just open our mouth and spew out foolishness. No, brothers and sisters. So we had better listen to him. Or someone will say, yes, brother Mark, but Jesus changed that when he came. Let us see if this is the case. Let us go to Matthew 4 and we are going to read 1 to 4. Matthew 4. One to four. Matthew four and one to four. Okay, my brother. Pick it up at verse one. Please read. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness uh -huh. to be tempted of the devil. Yes. 
And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, uh -huh. he was afterward and hungered. He had gone past being hungry. Go ahead. And when the tempter came to him. That's the devil, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. He said, uh -huh. if thou be the son of God, uh -huh. command that these stones be made bread. Yes. Go ahead and read. But he answered and said. What did he say? It is written. It is what? It is written. Go ahead. Man shall not live by bread alone, uh -huh. but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We just read that, brothers and sisters. We just read that. But. When Jesus came across his devil brothers and sisters because he came into the world to deliver us brothers and sisters from under the power of this fallen angel we know as Satan the devil. But for him to do that he had to face Satan himself in his full strength. So here we have this devil brothers and sisters trying to tempt him to go against the will of God. That's what he does to us every day, brothers and sisters. But what did Jesus tell this devil? Did he say, I'm going to nail the laws to the cross and the commandments and people don't need to keep them anymore? No. The law, brothers and sisters, the word of God, all of it is a weapon against the devil. And what we need to understand, brothers and sisters, if we don't make ourselves familiar with the word of God, this devil will turn around and try and use it on you. That's what he tried to do to Jesus. If we go on reading, we'll see that. He started quoting scripture. That is why we have to know the word of God, brothers and sisters. So we know how to wield this weapon which the Lord's given to us. Let's go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, and we're going to read 11 to 17. Ephesians 6, 11 to 17. Okay, verse 11. Please read. Put on the whole armor of God. Do what? Put on the whole armor of God. You didn't know that we need to have battle armor on, brothers and sisters? We know now. Why is that? Read. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of, of the who? devil. Against the wiles of the devil. It's very tricky, brothers and sisters, and we need our battle armor in place. We're going to see what they are. Go ahead and read. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So we ain't fighting flesh and blood, so who we fighting? Go ahead and read. But against principalities. Against principalities? Against powers. Yes. Against the rulers of darkness of ah, this world. Yeah, of which world? Of this world. The one in which we're living, brothers and sisters, where everything looks like glitz and glamour. But when we look, we see that it is full of rottenness and stink everywhere. Go ahead and read. Against spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's what we fight in spiritual hosts of wickedness. They're spirit beings, brothers and sisters. And we can't fight them with flesh and carnal weapons. That's why the Lord is giving us spiritual weapons with which to fight. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Not some of it. The whole armor. Go ahead. That ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. Aha. Uh -huh. And having done all to stand. Yes, go ahead. Stand therefore. Are we standing? Having your loins girt about with truth. That is our minds, brothers and sisters. That's our loins in this case. Girt about with what? The truth, which is the word of God. Go ahead and read. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. So we have on the breastplate of righteousness. That is walking in obedience to everything that God tells us to do. Go ahead. And your feet shod with the preparation. So we have on boots peace. like soldiers in the army, brothers and sisters. Which is the, the gospel. The gospel is also part of the weapon. Telling people how to get into the kingdom of God, brothers and sisters, that deliver themselves out of this darkness and the sneer and power of the devil. Go ahead and read. Above all, taking, Above the, all, taking the shield of faith. That is the belief and the knowledge that we know concerning the word of God. Go ahead and read. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Everything he shoots at us, we should be able to pull out of the armor of the word of God and say, No, no, you ain't coming past me with that. Go ahead and read. And take the helmet of salvation. The helmet covers your head, brothers and sisters. This is the control center. You want to take somebody out, take out the mind. Go ahead and read. And the sword of the spirit. What is that? Which is the word of God. Which is what? The word of God. Brothers and sisters, this whole book is a sword. It is a serious 
weapon and we better start learning how to use it. Did you finish that? Yes, sir. So these brothers and sisters are our holy garments for the glory of the Lord and for beauty because we represent him. But they are also for our protection and by which we wage war. Let us go to Job 29. Job 29. And we're going to read 1 to 4 and then skip to 14. Job 29. Okay. Job was going through some serious testings, brothers and sisters. Because he was walking right with his God. And we need to understand that too, brothers and sisters. That the Lord will test us at times. So let us see what this man's got to say. Job 29, verse 1. Pick it up. Moreover, Job continued his parable mm -hmm. and said, Oh, that I were as in months past, as in the days when God preserved me. Yes. When his candle shined upon my head. Uh -huh. And when by his light I walked through darkness. You see that, brothers and sisters, when by his light, not ours, by his light, we I walk through darkness, the darkness of this world, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. As I was in the days of my youth, uh -huh. when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. What was the secret of God in Job's home? Skip to verse 14 and let us read. Go ahead. I put on righteousness. I put on what? I put on righteousness. Go ahead. And it, it clothed me. Yes, sir. Go ahead. My judgment was as a robe. And a diadem. Yes, brothers and sisters, it is no secret. He heard the word of God and he obeyed it. Let's go to Revelation, the 19th chapter. Revelation 19. And we are going to read verse 7 to 9. Revelation 19, 7 to 9. Okay, my brother. Verse 7. Please read. Let us be glad and rejoice. And give honor to him. Uh -huh. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. Yes. And his wife hath made herself ready. Yes. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. Uh -huh. For the fine linen is the righteousness of, God, of saints. The fine linen is what? The righteousness of saints. Brothers and sisters, this word of God which we preach is a wedding invitation to enter into the kingdom of God. Oh, who's the bride here? Those who obey him, brothers and sisters. Those who serve him in righteousness as his word tells us how we must live. Let's go to Isaiah, the 61st chapter. You want to finish verse 9? Yep, then finish 9. Go ahead, my brother. And Read. he saith unto me. What do you say? Right. Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh -huh. And he saith unto me. Yes. These are the true sayings of God. He's calling you right now. Through this word which you are hearing, my brother, my sister. Right now, will you yield to the call? That's your decision to make. Let's go to Isaiah, the 61st chapter. Does the word of God tell us as a priest, all we have to do is, is to warn the people. Of course, we better warn ourselves first. Isaiah, the 61st chapter, and we are going to read verse 10. Isaiah 61 and 10. Okay, my brother, please read it. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. Uh -huh. My soul shall be joyful in my God. Why is this? For he have clothed me with the garments of salvation. Yes. He have covered me with the robe of righteousness. Uh -huh. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments. Yes. And as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. You see, brothers and sisters, we are to be rejoicing of people who have yielded to this invitation of God and are walking right. No matter what's going on around us, we know the end game. We know the end goal for us, brothers and sisters. So we should be rejoicing. Be joyfully for our God and clothed us with the garments of salvation, brothers and sisters. If we say we are the true servants of God and his priest and are not walking in obedience to him. Let us see our condition. Let us go to Revelation 16. Revelation 16. And we are going to read one verse and that is 15. Revelation 
16 and 15. Okay, my brother, please read it. Behold, I come as a thief. This is how the Lord said it. Come, brothers and sisters, like a thief. Thief creeps upon you. Go ahead, read. Blessed is he that watch it. Blessed is he that watch it. And keep if his garment. Ah. Uh -huh. Lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Say what? Let what it. sort of nakedness is this, brothers and sisters? Is this physical clothing? Let's go to Exodus, the 31st chapter. Exodus, the 31st chapter. And we are going to read 13 to 18. Exodus uh, 31, verse 13 to 18. Okay, my brother, pick it up. Verse 13. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Yes. Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep. Why is the Sabbath so important? Go ahead. For it is a sign between me and you. Throughout. It is a sign between who? Me and you. Go ahead, sir. Throughout your generation. Uh -huh. That ye may know that I am the Lord that doeth sanctify you. Yes, sanctify means to set apart, brothers and sisters. And many people don't understand and know that this Sabbath day which the Lord has given us, that it represents the thousand year millennium of Christ. And this is what we are laboring to get into, brothers and sisters. The Lord says it is a sign between me and my people. Those who are serving me. Go ahead and read. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Uh -huh. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. Yes. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. This is how serious this get, brothers and sisters. And the Lord had said in 13 that, really, my Sabbaths. So apart from the regular Saturday Sabbath, which we have, there are seven annual Sabbath days, brothers and sisters, which we must keep. But we teach those in their respective season. Continue to read, my brother. Read. 15. Mm -hmm. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Yes. Of holy to the Lord. Yes. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. The Lord is serious about his Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation. For how long? For a perpetual covenant. For a perpetual. There's no end to it, brothers and sisters. A perpetual covenant. Go ahead and read. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. And Israel is the church. So you want to serve this God? You've got to come into Israel and do exactly what Israel does. Go ahead and read. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. Uh -huh. And on the seventh day he rested. Yes. And was refreshed. Yes. Go ahead. And he gave unto Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. So Moses is up in the mountain getting all his instructions from the Lord and left Aaron the high priest, his brother, in charge of the people. Let us see what unfolds. We're going to go straight into Exodus 32, and we're going to read 1 to 5, then we're going to skip to 9 to 10. Skip to 21 and skip to 25. Then we're going to skip to 31 and read to 35. I'll take a breather and let you write that down. Okay, verse 1. Please read. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, uh -huh. the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, What did they say? Make us gods. Do what? Up, make us gods. Go ahead and read. Which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. Now what did Aaron do when he heard this? Go ahead. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. Because when Israel came out of Egypt, brothers and sisters, the Lord laid it upon the Egyptians' heart that they, they gave all this gold and precious things in repayment for all the time that he had in slavery down there, all that free labor which they got. So the Lord let them pay us. He said, they spoiled the Egyptians when we came out of Egypt, out of that terrible slavery. 
So they've got all these gold earrings and whatnot now uh, on their sons and daughters. And here on the priest is saying, bring them to me. Let's see what he does. Read. Verse 3. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. Ah. Uh -huh. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool. Yes. After he had made it a mountain calm. And then what happened? And they said, these be thy gods, O Israel. What? These, Say that again. These be thy gods, O Israel. You mean they took them gods out of their ears and, and put it in a fire and melt it down. And now they're saying, these be thy gods. Go ahead and read. Which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. The high priest did this, brothers and sisters. The high priest did this. The man who's supposed to have all the knowledge concerning God and be teaching the people. He did this. Let us see what the Lord's response is. Skip down to verse 9 and read. Do we want to finish verse 5? Did you, didn't you finish 5? No. Go ahead, my brother. And finish when, it. And when Aaron saw it, uh -huh. he built an altar before it. So it gets worse. Read. And Aaron made proclamation. What did he proclaim? And said, uh -huh. tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. So he started putting on the table his own feast day, brothers and sisters. Not a feast of the Lord, not being instructed by the Lord. He took it upon himself. And just like we have today, all these pagan feasts which people are observing within their churches, the Lord did not command these things. Well, you find a priest endorsing them and reveling in it with the people. It started from way back, brothers and sisters. So let us see what the Lord's response is to this. Skip down to verse 9 and read. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh -huh. I have seen this people. Yes. And behold, it yes. is a stiff necked people. It is what? It is a stiff necked people. We know, brothers and sisters, that the Lord cannot lie. And when we look at our people, oh my God, we are a stiff necked people. You can't tell us nothing. Up comes the chest. Me, don't come to me with that. That's what we like. Go ahead and read. Now, therefore, let me alone that uh -huh. my wrath may wax hot against them. Oh, boy. Go ahead. And that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. Brothers and sisters, are we understanding what we're reading here? So severe was this provocation that the Lord said, Moses, I'm going to kill all of them. But I'm going to spare just you. Why? Because the Lord only needs one male, brothers and sisters, because the male carried the seed. One male to fulfill the covenant which he had made with faithful Abraham. Skip to verse 21 and read. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did these people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? So what Moses did, brothers and sisters, Moses interceded for the people and begged God, beg, please don't destroy the people. So now he's talking to his brother and he said, listen, what did these people do unto you that thou hast brought such a great sin upon them? Are we read in the new covenant, brothers and sisters, what sin it is? And it is the same in the old. It is the transgression of the law. And brothers and sisters, as a priest, you have to be strong. In the word of God, when people come talking crazy to you, let us see the condition of the people once they sinned. Skip to verse 25 and read. And when Moses saw that the people were naked. When Moses saw what? That the people were naked. Go ahead and read. For Aaron had made them naked uh -huh. unto their shame among their enemies. Brothers and sisters, we read in Ephesians. That our fight is not against flesh and blood. So who are these enemies? The fallen angels which are spirit beings with Satan at the, their head. The Lord was so grieved, brothers and sisters, because of what we had done, that 3,000 Israelites lost their lives at the hand of their own brethren. Moses told him, the Levites, so who's on the Lord's side? Gather on your sword. Go through the camp. Kill brethren 
no matter close relatives, whoever they may be, kill them. That was how evil this thing was before the Lord, brothers and sisters. So the question has got to be asked, do we think we're going to get away with willful sins today? Skip to verse 31 and read. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin uh -huh. and have made them gods of gold. Yes, go ahead. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee out of thy book which thou hast written. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to stand here and I'm telling you straight. I am not Moses. I am not saying anything like this before God. For nobody, he might take me up on it. And I just read, oh, a stiff neck of rebellious people we are. No way. So go ahead and read, my brother. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever have sinned against Whoso me. Whosoever have sinned. Against me. Against me. Him will I blot out of my book. Brothers and sisters, God has a book where everything is recorded about you and me. And it's called the book of life. And we know these people like to go around telling you once saved, always saved. They are lying through their teeth. The word of God just confirmed that. The Lord said unto Moses, whoever have sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Plain and straight, brothers and sisters. So who told you once saved, all saved? The devil's ministers, Satan's ministers. That's who told you that. Go ahead and read. Verse 34. Therefore now go, lead the people unto the place of which I have spoken unto thee. Uh -huh. Behold, mine angel shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. Brothers and sisters, are we hear what the Lord said? Ain't getting away with nothing. The day when I visit. And there's times when he visits brothers and sisters. But this is also talking to the appointed time. When he is going to get up off that throne. And come back down to this earth. He is going to do some serious payback. People who have died in their sin. Thinking they might have gotten away with it. No, no. He going to wake us up brothers and sisters. And we are going to have to give an account. Read. And the Lord plagued the people. He did what? He plagued the people. Go ahead. Because they made the calf which Aaron made. Brothers and sisters, he play, when the Lord uses to say he plagued the people, it means people died. People get sick. They got diseased. He just bring it upon them. We People call this, this thing we call coronavirus here right now. It's, it's a plague. It kills people. People get infected. And sick, the Lord visits iniquity, brothers and sisters. He pours out his judgment upon it. So when we sin willfully, we become spiritually naked without any protection. And some of us, brothers and sisters, right now, may be getting whooped up by devils and are unaware that we are vagabonds. You know what vagabond is? A wanderer. Wander over to this camp. Wander over to that camp. Wander away from Today we get up, we're serving God. Next week we're living like the devil. Brothers and sisters, let us see what can happen to us when we do stuff like that. Let's go to Acts the 19th chapter. Acts 19. Acts 19. Are we going to read 13 to 16? Acts 19, 13 to 16. Okay, my brother. Pick it up at verse 13. Please read. Then certain of the vagabond Jews. Uh -huh. There's that word, brothers and sisters. Vagabond Jews. Go ahead. Exorcists. Uh-huh took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits uh -huh. the name of the Lord Jesus yes. saying we adjure you 
by Jesus whom Paul preaches. They wandered away from the faith, but were still trying to act like they belonged to God, brothers and sisters. These were Jews. So now they came across this man who had devils operating off him and decided they are going to give him a command to come out by this Jesus who Paul preached. What happened, my brother? Read. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, uh -huh. a Jew. So there were seven sons of a Jew. Who was he, my brother? And chief of the priests, which did so. So they were the sons of the chief priests. They ought to be well and truly seasoned in the word of God, brothers and sisters. But they were vagabonds. What the word say? Go ahead and read. And the evil spirit answered and said, mm -hmm. Jesus I know. Yes. And Paul I know. Yes. But who are you? So the evil spirit answered them. I said, Paul, listen up. I know Jesus. And I know who Paul is. But who are you to come and address me? Who are you? Oh, what happened, my brother? Read. And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them uh -huh. and overcame them. Yes. And prevailed against them. Yes. So that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. They got their butts whooped. Well and truly proper brothers and sisters. And this is what will happen and can happen to us when we act deceitfully. The Lord allowed this to happen and had this written in this word for you and me to read it today. Are we listening? Our brothers and sisters, when we were born, we were born without natural clothes on. I said, oh, we come into this world in our birthday suit, brothers and sisters. Come in in our skin. Naked. When we sin against God, we are also naked. Let us look at another type of nakedness. Let's go to Genesis, the third chapter. Genesis 3, and we're going to read 9 to 11. Genesis 3, 9 to 11. Okay, my brother, pick it up at verse 9. Please read. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Uh huh. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked. Uh, because I was what? Because I was naked. Go ahead. And I hid myself. Uh-huh. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Uh-huh. Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? The brothers and sisters, the Lord here used to commune with the first man and the woman that he had created. We know as Adam and Eve. But they said, they're like, didn't show up hiding himself away so the lord called out the man said boy i heard your voice i heard you coming and i went and hid myself because i was afraid they didn't know what fear was before brothers and sisters and he said also because i was naked so the lord said who told you that you were naked where did you get that information from? I didn't give it to you. It's not written down nowhere. Where did you get it? Have you been communicating? Have you eaten from this tree which I told you not to eat of? Put your marker here, brothers and sisters. We need to do some investigating. We're going back up to Genesis, the second chapter, and we're going to read to 7 to 9 and then skip to 16 to 17. Okay, Genesis 2, 7 to 9, and 16 to 17. Okay, verse 7, please read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Uh -huh. And man became a living soul. And that's exactly what happened. The Lord dug this man out of the, the dust of the ground and he did one thing, brothers and sisters, to get this man uh, living. He breathed into his nostril the breath of life. We also call it a spirit because we can't see it. And the man, all of him, became a living soul. We do understand that man is also a species, brothers and sisters, both male and female. So now, continue to read, my brother. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Uh -huh. 
And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now there were two trees, brothers and sisters, that were spiritual. They were symbolic here. These did not grow out of the ground. The tree of life represents Jesus Christ. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil represents this fallen angel, Satan, the devil. Skip to verse 16 and read. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Uh -huh. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. Thou shalt not what? Eat of it. Why is that? For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So man, brothers and sisters, was meant to live by eating words with his mind from Jesus. But he is told here, do not communicate, do not eat nothing from this fallen angel because he will give you information that will kill you. Let's go and have a look at him. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel, the 28th chapter. Did you want to finish 18? Go ahead, my brother. And the Lord God said, it no, is verse, not good. Where that, are you at? 18. No, it should have been 16 to 17. 17, oh, sorry. Okay, no problem. Let's turn to Ezekiel, the 28th chapter. Ezekiel 28. Are we going to read 13 to 17? Because the Lord put the man in the garden of Eden. Now we need to know who else was in there. Go ahead and read, my brother. Ezekiel 28, verse 13 to 17. Verse 13, please read. Thou hast been in the Eden, the garden of God. Uh -huh. Every precious stone was thy covering. Yes. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper. Yes. The sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold the workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes were prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. We never seen no man looking like this, brothers and sisters. So let's read and get some understanding. Go ahead. Thou art the anointed cherub that covered. So now we understand. A cherub is an angel. Go ahead. And I have said thee so. Uh -huh. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Yes. Thou was walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Uh -huh. Thou was perfect in thy ways. From the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. So when he was created, brothers and sisters, there was no iniquity in him. He was a good angel. But then something happened. Iniquity was found in him. Let us see how. Read. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Uh -huh. And thou hast sinned. Thou hast what? Thou hast sinned. So a, we find here that angels also can sin, disobey God, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. So the Lord said, I'm going to cast you as profane, something worthless, out of the mountain of God. Go ahead and read. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, uh -huh. from the midst of the stones of fire. What was his problem? Go ahead. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. His mindset became puffed up because he was good looking. We see this amongst people today, brothers and sisters. Look down your their nose because people have been told, telling them, you are a good look. Boy, you are sweet. So they become puffed up. Go ahead and read. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason that of thy Has corrupted thy what? Thy wisdom. He has corrupted his wisdom, brothers and sisters. By reason of what? Of thy brightness. Brightness. That means, brothers and sisters, you're very smart. When we had school, we used somebody, they used to be very quick at doing algebra and all this stuff, work it out in a jiffy. And we used to say, boy, he or she, they are bright. So, go ahead and read. I will cast thee to the ground. Uh -huh. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold so thee. So the Lord said, this is what you are going to do. So now, let us go and look at this casting out, because this took place in heaven, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Revelation, the 12th chapter. Revelation 12, and we're going to read 7 to 9. Okay, verse 7. Please read. And there was war in heaven. There was war where? In heaven. This is the first war we know anything about, brothers and sisters, and it didn't take place upon the earth. It took place in heaven between spirit beings. Go ahead and read. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Yes. And the dragon fought and his angels. Uh -huh. And prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And what happened? 
And the great dragon was cast out. Uh -huh. That old serpent. That old? That old serpent. Go ahead and read. Called the devil and Satan, uh -huh. which deceiveth the whole world. Yes. He was cast out into the earth. Was he alone? And his angels were cast out with so him. So he was strong enough, brothers and sisters. He's a created being. So the creator is greater, brothers and sisters. So he sinned. He deviated from what God told him to do. And he was fired. But he didn't want to go, brothers and sisters. So he decided he wanted to put up a fight. But he wasn't strong enough. So the Lord gave the order, throw him out. Him and the other rebellious angels who followed him. Another passage, Jesus told you that I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Jesus was there, brothers and sisters. He was there in heaven when it happened. And we, brothers and sisters, understand why there are so many warmongers down here upon the earth. Because that one who loved that type of war and get people turning against one another, he is down here. With all them evil angels with him. But the Lord put them on the chains of darkness, brothers and sisters, that he can't pop up in front of us at will. So now, these are just some of his titles we've got here. But I want this one to stick in your mind, the one that's called that old serpent. Now, let's go back to Genesis, the third chapter. And we're going to read 1 to 7 and then skip to 19. Okay, verse 1. Please read. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast. So now we know we are not talking no snakes slithering around in the bush, brothers and sisters. This is this fallen angel, Satan the devil. Go ahead and read. Was more subtle than any beast of the field. A very clever. Go ahead and read. Which the Lord God had made. Uh -huh. And he said unto the woman. So he eased upon the woman. That's Eve. Go ahead. Yeah. Have God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now we read that God said that, brothers and sisters. Now let's see if the woman understood this. Read. And the woman said unto the serpent, uh -huh. we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Yes. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, uh -huh. God have said, ye shall not eat of it, uh -huh. neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. So it is clear she understood perfectly what the word of God said. Go ahead and read. And the serpent said unto the woman. What did he say to the woman? Read. Ye shall not surely die. So he contradicts the word of God. God said you will die. This devil said no you won't. Go ahead and read. For God doeth know that in the day ye eat thereof. Uh -huh. Then your eyes shall be opened. Yes. And ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil. Now when it says that your eyes shall be open brothers and sisters. That, means, that doesn't mean that we're walking around physically blind. He was going to give them information to make them wise, brothers and sisters. After his course. But he had a plan in mind. Go ahead and read. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, uh -huh. and that it was pleasant to the eye. Brothers and sisters, we can go and show you what he looks like. And we had read it before. He was covered in bling. Blinged up, blinged up, brothers and sisters. So she was spellbound just by looking at him. Then he dropped them words on her and his voice, brothers and sisters. Sweet. And so, what happened? And a tree to be desired to make one wine. Ah. Uh -huh. She took all the fruit thereof and did eat. Yes. And gave also unto her husband with her. And he did so it. she got some information from him and took it back to her husband. And what happened? And the eyes of them both were open. And the eyes of them both were open. And what happened, my brother? And they knew that they were naked. They knew what? That they were naked. Go ahead. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Now he gave them a sexual education lesson, but he also gave them another lesson. We're going to find out what that is, brothers and sisters. But... They knew that they were naked. And so they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. So they received knowledge from Satan, brothers and sisters. And we don't see nowhere here where nobody ate any apples. Nowhere. So they paint you that rubbish in our minds, brothers and sisters. Oh, this woman ate of some apple. No, brothers and sisters. 
The word of God is the word of God. So skip to verse 16 and let us read. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So, as a result of it, the Lord is now pouring out judgment because sin has to be judged, brothers and sisters. Disobedient. So he told the woman, look, you were supposed to have a pleasant experience in having children. They said, now, because of this, it's going to be a sorrowful experience for you. And this is why, ladies, you also call it a man's world. You've got to be fighting hard for anything just to get a little bit of recognition. The word of God, brothers and sisters. The word of God. Go ahead. Now, what did he say to the man? Verse 17. And unto Adam he said, uh -huh. because thou hast hearkened. Because you have what? Has hearkened. This is how we know that it was information that they got from Satan. Hearken means to listen. Brothers and sisters. So go ahead and read. Unto the voice of thy wife. Uh-huh. And has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, yes. Thou shalt not eat of it. Uh -huh. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Yes. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it in all the days of thy life. Now what does the ground bring up, my brother, as a result? Read. Thorns also and thistles. That's why we thought that we get stung up by nettles and all sorts of stuff. Because the ground got cursed. Go ahead and read. Shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Ah. Uh -huh. Some people not only eat it, they smoke it too. <laughs> so go ahead, my brother, and read. In the sweat of thy face uh -huh. shalt thou eat bread. Yeah, you're going to have to work hard, mister, to get your living. Go ahead and read. Till thou return unto the ground. Till what? Till thou return unto the ground. Didn't we read that's what the Lord God did? He formed man out of the dust of the ground? Yes. So yes. why is it that we have these ministers lying to the people and tell them that the dead people go to heaven. They are calling God a liar. Mm -hmm. But we know who the liar is. Go ahead and read. For out of it was thou taken. Uh -huh. For dust thou art. Yes. And unto dust thou shalt return. Yes, sir. And we see that week in, week out, even today, there are those being put back into the ground because they have died, brothers and sisters. And all this because man listened to Satan, brothers and sisters. That is why we are dying today. We were under a death sentence with no way out. And we are not talking just physical death here, brothers and sisters. God calls that sleep. Here we are talking spiritual death in the lake of fire, also called the second death. So what did the Lord our God do what we were not able to do and were powerless to do? Let's go to Isaiah 59 chapter. Isaiah 59. And we are going to read 11 to 18. Isaiah 59, 11 to 18. Okay, my brother, verse 11. Please read. We roar all like bears. That's what we do all day. Go ahead. And mourn so like doves. Uh -huh. We look for judgment. Yes. But there is none. Uh -huh. For salvation. But it is far off. From yes. Us. Go ahead. For our transgressions are multiplied. Yes, brothers and sisters. Our transgressions are multiplied. Sin, sin, and more sin in all the earth. Go ahead and read. And our sins testify against us. Uh huh. For our transgressions are with us. Uh huh. And as for our iniquities, yes. we know them. Yes, and sometimes, brothers and sisters, we remember some of them sins we do and we groan, brothers and sisters. Painful! Go ahead and read. In transgressing and lying against the Lord. Uh-huh. And departing away from our God. Yes. Speaking oppression and revolt. Conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. Words of falsehood. All you got to do is just listen to conversations round about you. Falsehood everywhere. Go ahead and read. And judgment is turned away backward. Uh -huh. And justice standeth afar off. Yes. For truth is fallen in the street. Truth is fallen in the street, brothers and sisters. Who's listening to this word that we're giving out? Who? Go ahead and read. And equity cannot enter. Uh-huh. Yeah, truth faileth. And he that 
departed from evil, maketh himself a prey. Brothers and sisters, that is the truth. We used to run along doing the evil ourselves, but when we got wisdom from the word of God and stopped doing it, and would try and tell people that what you're doing is evil, they rail up on you. They rail up, brothers and sisters. You depart from evil, you make yourself a prey. People come after you. But what did the Lord do, my brother? Read. And the Lord saw it. The Lord saw it. And it displeased him that there was no judgment. And what did he do? And he saw that there was no man. There was no man. And one that, that was no intercessor. There was no man clean, brothers and sisters, who he could send. No man, all of us, have sinned and departed from God and abided in death. Go ahead and read. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him. Yes. And his righteousness is sustained him. Yes. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate. He did what? Put on righteousness as a breastplate. Ah, uh -huh, go ahead. And a helmet of salvation put upon his head. Yes. And he put on the garments of vengeance, uh -huh. the clothing. And he was clad with zeal as a cloak. Salvation, brothers and sisters, is for man. It is not for the fallen angels. But if man will not repent and stop sinning against God, then into the lake of fire we will go. Continue to read. According to their deeds, accordingly he will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies, to the islands he will re repay recompense. Brothers and sisters, we had better believe the word of God. He's serious about it, brothers and sisters. So now, we had to ask the question, did Satan lie that we were naked? So let's go to 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. 2 Corinthians 5, and we're going to read 1 to 5. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 1 to 5. Okay, now, go ahead, verse 1, please read. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, that is the outward brothers and sisters, if it was dissolved, this earthly tabernacle which we dwell in, go ahead. We have a building of God, uh -huh. and a house not made with hands, yes. eternal in the heavens. Go ahead, sir, read. For in this we, we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. Say what? Brothers and sisters, we believe and know this word of God is truth. And we know that there is a spiritual body which is for us, brothers and sisters. The Lord did not create man to die. We were supposed to go from flesh and blood to spirit, but sin entered and contaminated everything, brothers and sisters. So what's this left us with now for those of us who know the truth? We are groaning. We're tired of walking around. Paul calls it this in this body of death. With all his limitations, with all of this groaning and this sickness and diseases, all this stuff that, play, that plague us, we're fed up with it. So we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is in heaven. Go ahead, my brother, read. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Hang on a minute. If so, being clothed, we shall not be found naked. Go ahead, my brother. Read. For we that are in this tabernacle uh -huh. do groan. Yes. Being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, uh -huh. but clothed upon. Yes. That mortality might be swallowed up of life. These mortal bodies will be swallowed up of life, brothers and sisters. These mortal bodies, we, we want to get rid of them. So now, read, my brother. Now he that have wrought us for the selfsame thing is God. Yes, it is God who has purposed this. Go ahead. Who also have given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Yes, brothers and sisters. That is why we ain't got time to be flirting around with stuff in this world, brothers and sisters. So, we are all naked. Man was created in the image of God, but was to come after his kind, after God kind, which is what? A spirit being, brothers and sisters. 
and had man not listened to Satan, there would be no death. Let's go to Acts, the second chapter. Acts 2. Acts 2. And we're going to read 22 to 24, then skip to 36 and read to 40. Acts 2 and 22. Okay, my brother, please read. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Mm -hmm. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Go ahead, sir. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Yes, he's talking about Jesus now. Go ahead, sir. Read. Whom God have raised up, having loosed the pains of death, uh -huh. because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. It was not possible for death to hold on to him, brothers and sisters. Not possible. So now, Peter the apostle uh, of Israel tells of the salvation of God through Jesus Christ. Now skip to verse 36 and read. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly mm -hmm. that God have made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Oh, what happened when they heard this word, my brother? Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Ah, uh -huh. their conscience was greatly aroused. And what they say? And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, uh -huh. men and brethren, what shall we do? Yes. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. He said what? Repent. That is to stop sinning. Turn from it. Go ahead. And be baptized, uh -huh. every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. What for? For the remission of sins. So that your sins past will be blotted out. From here on, you will walk in obedience to the commandments, laws, and statutes of God. Because we have learned that sin is a transgression of the law. Go ahead, sir. Read. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Go ahead, sir. For the promise is unto you uh -huh. and to your children yes. and to all that are afar off, uh -huh. even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And how will he call them? Through the preaching of his word, brothers and sisters. That's what we're doing. Go ahead, sir. Read. And with many other words did he testify uh -huh. and exhort, saying, yes. Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Our brothers and sisters, that untoward generation has come right down to us here. This is an untoward generation. So the saving plan of God, which we call salvation, is this for Israel only? Let us find out. Let's go to the book of Titus. 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 Two, and we're going to read verse 1 and then we're going to skip to 11 and read to 15. Okay, Titus 2, verse 1. Go ahead, my brother. Please read it. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. That's teaching, brothers and sisters. Let's skip down to verse 11 and read. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared to all men. Appeared to Israel only. All men. Appeared to Israel only. Don't all argue with me, my brother. All men. <laughs> I'm glad you got the book and you've all got the book, brothers and sisters, so we can read it together. The grace of God that bringeth salvation have appeared unto all men. That is an absolute. Go ahead, sir, and read. Teaching us that. Uh -huh. Denying ungodliness and yes. worldly lust uh -huh. we should live soberly righteously and godly in the pre present how world. are we supposed to be living today people having known this word of truth what does the word of god teach us denying ungodliness and worldly lust we should live soberly that's with self-control and righteously and godly in this present world go ahead my brother why do are we doing this is it for nothing Looking for that blessed hope. Looking for, looking for that blessed hope. Go ahead. And the glorious appearing yes, sir. of the great God and our Savior, Jesus that Christ. That is why we are living righteously, people. The Lord told us that it is with great joy that the Father wants us to inherit the kingdom. So that's what we're looking for. Go ahead, sir. Read. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity. Yes. And purify unto himself a peculiar people, 
zealous of good works. Yes, sir. Read. These things speak. These things speak. And exhort. And exhort. And rebuke with and all rebuke authority. And rebuke with all authority. Go ahead, sir. And let no man despise you. Let no thee. man despise you. What is the sound doctrine, brothers and sisters? Salvation is available to all men through Jesus Christ. And his message comes through his faithful priest in Israel. Let us look at a man who knew about the salvation from way back, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Job, the 19th chapter. Job 19. And we're going to read 25 to 27. Job 19, 25 to 27. Okay, my brother. Please read. For I know that my Redeemer liveth. Hang on a minute. He didn't say, I think. Or I hope so. The man said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know. Can we say that, brothers and sisters? I know. Go ahead, sir. Read. And that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Where is he going to stand, my brother? Upon the earth. In the latter days. Upon this earth. Planet earth which we are on. Go ahead, sir. Read. And though after my skin worms destroy this body. Say what? Skin destroy this body. Say what? Take that up at 26 again. And though after my skin worms destroy this body. Ah. Uh -huh. Yet in my flesh shall I see God. Hang on a minute. Are we hearing what this man saying, brothers and sisters? The man knew that he was going to die and his body was going to decompose. But he said what? Yet in my flesh shall I see God. What does he go on to say? Read. Whom I shall see for myself. Nobody's going to tell me there he is over there. I'm going to see him for myself. Go ahead, sir. Read. And my eye shall behold and not another. Uh -huh. Though my reins be consumed within me. Woo what a testimony. What a testimony. And this before Christ came and died in the flesh. This man had some great knowledge, brothers and sisters. Hold this testimony in the book concerning the resurrection. But brothers and sisters, for this to happen, there has to be the resurrection of the dead and a change. So let us back up to Job 14. And we're going to read 13 to 15. Job 14, 13 to 15. What's he say, my brother? Pick it up. Verse 13. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave. Go ahead. That thou wouldest keep me secret. Because people walk all over graves today and don't even know that there's somebody under there, brothers and sisters. So he's secret. Go ahead, sir. Read. Until thy wrath be passed. Until what? Thy wrath be passed. This world is not prepared for the wrath which God is going to pour out upon it because of all the wickedness which is taking place upon it. And before we pass judgment and say, yeah, I know somebody who's wicked. What about us? What about me? What about you? Are we wicked? Are we breaking the commandments and statutes of God? Read. That thou wouldest appoint me a set time uh -huh. and remember me. Appoint me a set time and remember me. Go ahead, sir. Read. If a man die, yes. shall he live again? What a question. What a question. He go answer it. Go ahead, sir. Read. All the days of my appointed time. All the days of my appointed time. Will I wait? I'm going to wait. Where? Right in the grave. Until what? Go ahead. Till my change comes. Till what? Till my change Til comes. Till my change comes. What's he talking about, my brother? Read. Thou shalt call. Thou shalt call. And I will answer thee. And I will answer thee. Have you ever heard a dead man talk, brothers and sisters? No. Go ahead, sir. Read. Thou will have a desire to work to the work of thine hands. What he started, he is going to complete, brothers and sisters. He is going to complete it. This man, Job, knew he was going to die, but death couldn't separate him from the eternal plan of God. God would call at the appointed time, and he would hear and answer him. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4, chapter. 1 Thessalonians 4. We're 
1 Thessalonians 4, and we're going to read 13 to 17. Okay, my brother, verse 13. Please read it. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. You know what he's talking about there? I don't want you to be misinformed about those who have died. That first death, the, we, the Lord just call it sleep. And you're going to wake people up out of sleep, brothers and sisters. So go ahead, sir, and read. That you sorrow not, uh -huh. even as others which have no hope. Who are those who don't have no hope, brothers and sisters? Those who do not believe the words of this God. They are sorrowing beyond sorrow. Because they have no hope. But we have a blessed and sure hope, just like Job. The man said, I know, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, yes, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Will who bring? Will Read bring. that aside again. Read verse 14 again, sir. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, yes, even so them also which sleep in Jesus. That's right. Remember I said he calls dead sleep? Go ahead. Will God bring with him? Yes, sir. Go ahead. How's this going to come about? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, uh -huh. that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord uh -huh. shall not prevent them which are asleep. Job knew, brothers and sisters, Job knew all about this. This is what he was talking about. So now, go ahead, sir, read. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. How will he come? With a shout, shout, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, sir, read. With the voice of the archangel uh -huh. and with the trump. Of God uh -huh. and the dead in Christ shall rise. This first. is why the Lord gave us a piece of trumpets, brothers and sisters, for us to know the dress rehearsal of what's going to happen. At the seventh trumpet, brothers and sisters, the Lord's going to descend with a shout with the archangel, and this is when the dead in Christ are going to rise first. This is what Job and all who have fallen asleep, right, serving God, are waiting for. That trumpet call and the shout, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, sir. Read. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds uh -huh. to meet the Lord in the air. To meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Yes, brothers and sisters. But we need to clarify something because there are these people who, and it is a fundamental doctrine of Christendom today. That the Lord is going to rapture people off to heaven. So now, we just read that the Lord is descending and we are going to meet him in the air. We agree, brothers and sisters? So now, let us see what's going to happen when we meet him in the clouds. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians 15. Are we going to read 35? Then we're going to skip to 40 and then read to 42 to 54. 1 Corinthians 15. Are we going to read 35? Okay, my brother. Verse 35. Please read. But some man will say, uh, How are the dead raised up? Uh, and with what body do they come? As, uh, that is quite a solid question, actually. How are the dead raised? And with what body do they come? Skip down to verse 40, my brother, and read. There are also celestial bodies uh -huh. and bodies terrestrial. The celestial mean heavenly bodies and terrestrial is earthly bodies. Go ahead, sir. Well, the glory of the celestial is one. Yes. And the glory of the terrestrial is another. They differ in glory. Go ahead, sir. Skip to uh, verse 42 and read. So also is the resurrection of the dead. Uh -huh. It is sown in corruption. Uh -huh. It is raised in incorruption. Yes. It is sown in dishonor, uh -huh. it is raised in glory. Yes. It is sown in weakness, uh -huh. it is raised in power. Yes, sir. Go ahead. It is sown a natural body. It is sown a natural body. That's one we got. Go ahead to read. It is raised a spiritual it body. It is raised a spiritual body. Go ahead, sir. There is a natural body. There is the natural. And there is a spiritual body. And then there is a spiritual. Go ahead, sir. Read. And so it is written. What's it is written, my brother? Go ahead. The first man, Adam, the was, first man, Adam was made a living soul. We read that, brothers and sisters. The Lord formed him out of the dust of the ground and breathed to him his nostrils the breath of life. He became a living soul. Go ahead, sir. Read. The last Adam was Who? made a quickening spirit. The last Adam, which is Jesus Christ, was made what? A quickening spirit. What's that? A life-giving spirit, brothers and sisters. A life-giving spirit. 
Go ahead, sir. Read. Albeit that was not first which is spiritual, yes, but that which is natural, yes, and afterward that which is spiritual. And that's what's supposed to happen without any death coming into it. We were supposed to go from the natural to spiritual. Go ahead, sir. The first man is of the earth, yes, earthy, yes. The second man is the Lord from heaven. The second man is who? The Lord from yes, heaven. Yes, brothers and sisters, he who clothed himself with flesh to come and show us the way out. He is the Lord from heaven. Go ahead, sir. As is the earthy, uh -huh. such are they also that are earthy. Yes. And as is the heavenly, uh -huh. such are they also that are heavenly. And then he sings us some sweet music. Go ahead and read. And as we have borne the image of the earth, as we have borne the image of the earthly, go ahead. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Oh Lord, oh Lord, go ahead, my brother. Read. Now this I say, brethren. Ah, uh, what's the, he say? That the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God, brothers and sisters. The only way is by becoming spirit beings. Go ahead, sir. Read. Neither doeth corruption inherit incorruption. And he won't tell us something. Go ahead, sir. Behold, uh -huh. I show you a mystery. Uh -huh. We shall not all sleep. We're not all going to die. Go ahead. But we shall be all changed. But we are all going to be changed, brothers and sisters. All, both the wicked and the righteous. We are all going to be changed. Changed into spirit beings, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, sir. Read. In a moment. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye. Uh huh. At the last trump. Yes. For the trumpet shall sound. Yes. And the dead shall be raised in corru incorruptible. And what's happened after that? And we shall be changed. And we shall be changed. It's going to happen in a twinkling of an eye. Before we can bat an eyelid, it's done. Go ahead. Read. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. Uh huh. And this mortal must put on immortality yes sir read so then this corruptible shall have put on incorruption uh -huh. and this mortal shall put on immortality what's gonna happen then shall be brought to pass the saying yes that is written death is swallowed up in victory death is swallowed up in victory brothers and sisters death swallowed up in victory my goodness Whew. Hot fire from the word of God, brothers and sisters. So now the question still has to be asked. Are we going to heaven after meeting the Lord in the clouds, fully clothed with our spiritual bodies? Job told us he knew for certain the Lord was going to stand upon the earth. So let's go and see if he was right. Let's go to Zechariah the 14th chapter. Zechariah 14. And we are going to read 1 to 5 and then skip to 9. Zechariah 14, 1 to 5. And then we are going to skip to 9. Okay, my brother, verse 1. Please read. Behold, the day of the Lord coming. The day of the Lord. All the prophets talk about this day. It's the day when the Lord's going to touch down upon this earth, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, read. And thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Ah. Uh -huh. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Uh -huh. And the city shall be taken. Yes. And the houses rifled. Yes. And the women ravished. Uh -huh. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. Uh -huh. And the residue of the people shall not be cut off. Brothers and sisters, this year we see all these nations arming themselves up to the teeth. They don't know that this is in preparation for the battle of Armageddon. Go ahead, my brother. Read. Then shall the Lord go forth uh -huh. and fight against those nations. Yes. As when he fought in the, the day of battle. And what's going to happen, my brother? Read. And his feet shall stand in that day uh -huh. upon the Mount of Olives. Where? Upon the Mount of Olives. Yes. Go ahead. Which is before Jerusalem. Uh -huh. On the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof. Yes, the brothers east. and sisters. This is where the Lord took off when he was going back to heaven, was from the Mount of Olives. And when the disciples was there gazing up into the sky, the angel said to them, Ye men of Israel, why you stand here gazing up into the sky? 
This same Jesus who you see left in like manner, he going to come back. And this is what we're reading, brothers and sisters, right here. Go ahead, sir, read. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west. Uh -huh. And there shall be a very great valley. Yes. And half of the mount mountain shall remove towards the north. Yes. And half of it towards the south. Yes, sir. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountain. Uh -huh. For the valley of the mountain shall reach unto Azel. Yes. Yeah, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And the Lord my God shall come. And the Lord my God shall come. Go ahead. And all the saints with thee. And all the saints with thee. Where did the Lord get these saints from, brothers and sisters? The same ones that we met in the air. The ones who have been resurrected, brothers and sisters, in the first resurrection. We're going to meet the Lord in the air now after his likeness, and we're coming straight back down here with him. And it's kick butt time. Skip to verse 9 and read. Because when he's done, what's going to happen? And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. Over where? All the earth. All the earth, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, sir. In that day shall there be one Lord uh -huh. and his name one. Yes, brothers and sisters, all the names of these strange gods which people worship, they ain't going to be remembered no more. There is going to be just one name, brothers and sisters. The Lord's name is going to be one. So now, what about those who didn't make the first resurrection, brothers and sisters? Let's go to Revelation 20. Revelation 20. And we're going to read 5 to 6 and then skip to 11 to 15. Okay, now. Revelation 20, 5 to 6. Okay, my brother, verse 5. Well, the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. Uh-huh. This is the first resurrection. Yes, brothers and sisters, this is the millennium reign of Christ now where the saints are with him reigning here upon this earth the rest of the dead who did not make it in the first resurrection they're still in their graves go ahead sir read blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection and that's what we're looking for if we pass before the lord returns to this earth go ahead sir on such the uh -huh. second death have no power what has no power the second the death. second death this is what we're talking about brothers and sisters this is a spiritual death Go ahead, sir. Read. But they shall be priests of God uh -huh. and of Christ. Yes. And shall reign with him a thousand years. Yes, brothers and sisters. That is why we keep the Sabbath day. This is what it points to. Skip down to verse 11, sir, and read. And I saw a great white throne. Uh -huh, because he... before, before uh, 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 the great white throne judgment, brothers and sisters, the Lord's going to throw Satan and his minions um, in the lake of fire because he's got one more job for satan to do and uh during this millennium period satan's gonna be locked away but after that he let him out for a season for the final job which he's got so now after that takes place this is what's gonna happen pick it up again at 11 and read and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on it mm -hmm. from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Yes. And there was found no place for them. Yes. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Uh -huh. And the books were open. Yes. And another book was open, uh -huh. which is the book of life. We read about this book from way back, brothers and sisters. This is why uh, we find Moses was saying to blot the, the, him out of the book of life if, if, if the Lord wouldn't forgive Israel for all their sins back then. This is that book now, brothers and sisters. The books were open. The books are the books of this Bible. Go ahead, sir. Read. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books. Oh, you're going to judge dead people. They get resurrected, brothers and sisters. This is what this is about now. The second resurrection. Go ahead, sir. Read. According to their work. Uh-huh. According to what? Their work. Boy, this is serious. Because we have people... Who say they believe this God who go around telling people they don't need to do no works because Christ done it all for you. If that was the case, why are we being judged according to the works? Somebody has been woefully misinformed. Go ahead, sir. Read. 
And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Yes. The death and hell delivered up the dead. That is a grave there, that's hell. Go ahead. Which were in them. Uh huh. And they would judge every man according to their works. Every man according to their works. Go ahead, sir. Read. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Uh huh. This is the second death. This is what? The second death. This is what the Lord has. Wanting to deliver us from brothers and sisters. This is why he has given us his salvation. That we don't end up in the second death in the lake of fire. Go ahead to read. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life. Uh -huh. Was cast into the lake of fire. Why now? Brothers and sisters. We here in this word alive today. We need to ensure we get our names in the book of life and not do anything stupid to get it blotted out. We are all awaiting to be clothed. We need to make sure we don't get clothed for the lake of fire. I want to thank you for your time. Have we got any announcements, Boron? Yes, sir. Thank you for being with us today. We meet at the GRS Lions Club, Church Road, Ernington, Birmingham, England, B249 BA, every Saturday from 2 to 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. UK time, our lesson from headquarters will be God. Is it two of them or just one who talks to himself? Pentecost is coming up in June, and we have to begin the preparations now so for those in the uk we need to know who will be coming so we can cater for you we would like to thank the moderators sis sb flowers we pray you get well real quick bro ozo adams and those visiting us for the first time today in the house and online we would also like to thank bro asa bro Chaz, bro barona g's the graphics and production team we love and appreciate all the brethren in and out of the house for your love and support, laboring work with us in the vineyard. The Israel of God is serving on many different platforms during the week, such as brothers working together in the vineyard, the coffee and Bible hour show, let us reason together, the Balm of Gilead radio show, stick to the script, Wednesday night question and answer session, Friday night prayer night, come on into my room. You can find further information on these events by subscribing to the IOG News app. Please like, share, and subscribe to these lessons. Please also subscribe to all the other camps. The Israel of God does have a dress code. Dress code for sisters. Please wear a head covering such as a hat, scarf, etc. This is required. Do not wear pants, shorts, skirts, mini or tight-fitting bottoms, halter tops of any kind or revealing splits. Please wear modest apparel only. Dress code for brothers. Please remove any head covering upon entering the class. Do not wear sleeveless shirts, short pants, tight-fitting pants, fleece jogging pants, or any other revealing pants. Younger brothers, please wear belts on your pants and pull them up on your waist. Tuck your shirt tails in your pants. This is the meeting place of God, and he commands respect and holiness. These are today's notices. Please enjoy the rest of the Lord's Sabbath day. Let us stand and face Jerusalem to close out. Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done in earth, in earth, as it is in heaven, as it is in heaven. Give us this day, give us this day, our daily bread, our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not, and lead us not into temptation, into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Okay, brothers and sisters, we want to thank you again so much. Please continue to enjoy the rest of the Lord's Sabbath day. Thank you for your time.